future of virtual sex. Uh, it's something we have to think about because inevitably all human technology comes back around to our pants. Um, you know, be it vulcanized rubber uh, winding up in the use of condoms, be it uh, um, the invention of film uh, making uh, modern pornography possible. Uh, everything that we do, it's going to find its uses uh, in ways to uh, kill each other and also in ways to uh, um, enjoy sexuality. So, um, what does the future of sex look like? I recently uh, researched this for an article on HowStuffWorks.com and my research led me, uh, weirdly enough, into medieval demonology. Transport yourself back to witch trials. You have uh, uh, these individuals that are uh, pressing uh, accused witches for information on their sexual um, encounters with, uh, with devils. And, uh, and then they have uh, theologians that have to make sense of this. Because uh, in the old days, there was, uh, in, in the West, the idea of a demon having sex with a, with a physical um, human was, uh, was considered an impossibility because a demon has no body. How can something uh, that has no form, no substance, how can we engage with that physically? And this is exactly the, the sort of question that we end up asking with virtual sex. You generally have two types of virtual sex and both are essentially computer mediated communication. Think of it as carnal knowledge, carnal information that is, uh, that is uh, used in this situation. Uh, because you'll have individuals who are communicating sexually across the, uh, the internet or you'll have an individual who is wishing to engage sexually with something that doesn't actually exist, a simulation, uh, an idea, you know, it's just a, you know, just a video or something even. It, it's really not that different from this idea of this individual having uh, an encounter with some sort of being from the spirit realm. In the Middle, Age, Middle Ages, they had to uh, sit down and think about this and work out how, exactly how the metaphysics of their faith worked. How would it be possible for this individual to uh, uh, get it on with, uh, with the horned one, as it were? And in today's uh, modern technology, uh, the same questions are asked, but it's how can we translate this, uh, these physical senses uh, into something that can be transmitted and received across vast distances? Not all the applications for virtual sexuality are necessarily going to be all that seedy either. I mean, imagine, for instance, a situation where an astronaut is traveling to another planet on a long journey. And suppose they want to communicate physically with a loved one that they left behind on Earth. Uh, this is where sexual um, technology of the future could en enable them to uh, continue this, uh, this relationship. So obviously, carnal information uh, breaks down across the five senses. Sight, we tend to have down pretty good. I mean be it uh, you know, video uh, or computer uh, graphics, we have a pretty good handle on where that is and where it's going. Likewise, sound, that's an easy one. Uh, it's when we get into the other uh, sensations that, uh, that we're, we're a little iffy. For instance, touch. Uh, a lot of research has gone into haptic technology, computer haptics. Uh, and this is, all has to do with how do we translate touch into the computer realm so that we can either A, manipulate physically objects that exist only virtually, uh, which could be something as simple as like touching something in a video game or as complex as a surgeon on one side of the world um, engaging with a patient on another on, on the other side of the world uh, via some sort of haptic glove situation where they're they're using an interface here and robotic hands um, elsewhere are performing the surgery and then we have uh, digital scent technology uh, and uh, to, to a, a certain extent um, digital taste technology. Of course, taste is largely informed by our sense of smell. You do have some research going into ways to translate um, sensations, both physical and taste-wise, in the mouth into uh, a virtual sense. You have, uh, there's, a, there's a kiss transmitter that they've worked out in Japan, which looks kind of like, a, oh, um, kind of like a joystick that sticks in your mouth, and it's created so that two people might share a kiss virtually. You also have something called the hug shirt, uh, that was uh, invented in the UK, which enables people to send uh, hugs to people with the, with the proper garments on. So you have all of this information coming in to a, a, a chorus, uh, the kind of thing that we take for granted in the physical world, but it takes a, a great deal of, uh, of effort in the virtual world. Um, luckily, there is something called cross-modal attention effects. If you'll think back to, say, uh, your first kiss, 
you probably can't tell me what the, um, the sofa felt like that you were sitting on, or necessarily what, the, what music was playing in the background, but you can probably, you probably remember the kiss really well, and that's cross-modal attention effects uh, in action. Uh, this means that when, the, um, when one type of, uh, of sense uh, perception is, uh, is the forefront, the others sort of fade into the background. And it means that uh, if we're creating a virtual environment, be it sexual or non-sexual, um, we don't necessarily have to have everything in HD. We just need to have the key parts of it in HD. So that cuts down on the amount of work, the amount of processing that has to go into a virtual world. So where is the future of virtual sexuality going? I think it's definitely leading to that example that I discussed earlier where, say, an astronaut will be able to um, you know, physically embrace a loved one that he left behind or she left behind uh, on their home planet. And it'll also enable people to engage with a person or entity that only exists in their imagination uh, or only exists in fictional realms that will be manifested virtually uh, in, the, in the computer realm. And, uh, and again, this, is, this draws me back to this, uh, this medieval idea. Uh, again, things that were, uh, were previously only imaginable uh, in, uh, in the old days are possible when we look into the future. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.